I forgot to put my microphone right there. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's, um, I guess it's, uh, been a bit. It's, um, been a hot diggity dog while since I, um, last uploaded anything super big, you know, whatever, or all that types of nonsense. Like, just a week ago, I uploaded, um, a Smash video that's been recorded over two months ago, so. And then, um, there's the second episode of the Bendy Show that happened. Uh, a whole month after that video that I made explaining about my own feelings and after that um, yeah so before we get into the topic of this video I guess I guess I should probably say this first I do apologize for the extreme lack of upload um, during this year I've been looking through over my channel for the past um, I don't know how long, and I, I can't remember how many of us, so I'm gonna check right now. So, discluding some of the live streams I uploaded last year, I'm assuming I uploaded actually a quite fair bit um, during the time of um, 2021. But this year, I have done no live streams, and I've done only counting seven videos. Actually, let's disclude the one where I vented. Six videos of in this year and we're already almost halfway through so With this in mind, I'm gonna try to actually do a schedule um, Where I upload Hopefully every Sunday, maybe not every single Sunday I might miss maybe just one week, but hopefully every Sunday until I start next semester and then um Yeah, hope just hopefully I get a little bit of a better consistent schedule, I guess so Anyways, this is sort of a bit of a reason why the topic that we're talking about today is on this day and on the Sunday. Well, actually, technically, as the time of recording, this is actually Friday, 12, 13 a.m., because I over here always be recording videos super late at night, like I always do. But assuming that you guys are seeing this on Sunday, which you better be seeing this on Sunday. If you're not, I will slap myself. Assuming that you guys are seeing this on Sunday, the two biggest reasons are Number one, again, the whole schedule thing, and number two, today, as you guys should be seeing this, should be my birthday. My 20th birthday. Whoa! Yeah, I'm 20 years old, or two decades old, I guess, if you put it that way. I know, I'm old. I'm. And as I was thinking about the age that I am at, I kind of realized that there's something missing in my life. Or maybe I should say, thanks to the ongoing years, something has eventually became missing in my life. And I was thinking about the things I did as a child, other than suffering through allergies and stuff. One of the things I've been noticing is that my um, stuff of interest has most certainly changed over time. Over time, you know, I got this little buddy with me that I believe is probably one of the greatest things ever created in all of mankind. And just look at this adorable guy. He's so cute! And then he squeaks in all the types of stuff. How could you not like this, dude? Recently, over the past uh, two years, I guess, I got an interest in uh, Hyper Dimension Neptunia. Because of that, this hmm? is my new official waifu. <laughs> but if there's one thing that has never changed over time or any of the past couple of years is my interest of Jesus Christ in video games. Ah, Mario. Mario, it's just, he's, even ever since I was a child, he's always been my number one. He's always been the guy, you know? He's always been the special boy, the, the guy that was always there when I'm playing video games, you know? Just the, the everything, you know? However, um, as the times have gone, while I have stuck with my interest of some of these things and maybe even got some new interests, um, I've also been losing a lot of interest in other things. Like, um, I feel really weird saying this, but I think I'm losing my interest in Dragon Ball Z altogether. And maybe that could just be the fact that ever since Dragon Ball Super ended, I kind of um, haven't kept up with the show at all. Um, to be frank with you guys, there's this transformation that Vegeta has called Ultra Ego Vegeta, and I never even knew about it until the recent premiere to death battle of Thor versus Vegeta. However, one of the things that, for some reason, I feel like I would have lost my interest then, but thanks to the movies that came out recently, I've never lost my interest too, and admittedly has had a lot of a rocky, shaky history, 
ever since 2017, or maybe even before that, is... The guy on my shirt. This guy. Sonic the Hedgehog. I've had a bit of a weird history with Sonic, a, a really, really weird one, I guess. I, well, maybe not as weird as some other people, but I say weird, it's because even though Mario has been, you know, my obvious number one, Sonic, on the other hand, has been, like, passively, aggressively my number one also. I'm not trying to describe it, but there was a time and age where I genuinely played a lot more Sonic games than I have Mario, and I honestly feel like there's a lot of people out there who can agree with me on this, even if you owned a Nintendo console, any sort of Nintendo console whatsoever. I feel like, one way or another, Sonic was the guy. Like, he was the guy. No matter what game you were playing, it, w it just had Sonic in it. Whether if it was, what was it, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 or 2, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles and all that types of stuff. Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. Sonic Heroes. Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing. Or even, if you're in my cousin's case, Sonic and the Black Knight. Sonic Colors. The racing game I just mentioned earlier. Like, Sonic, for me and for my family, was the guy. Like, I don't know anyone in this family that doesn't know who Sonic is. You have to be like five years old in my family and not know who Sonic is. That's the only way you don't know who this guy is, is if you are five years old and you never grew up like how I did. Playing video games and very especially playing Sonic games. And then to see this thrilling thing of like, back when I was so shocked to see the Sonic the Hedgehog was announced, not even announced, I just, like, what was it? It was in Brawl when, uh, when a bunch of guys were playing Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and then to see that Sonic the Hedgehog was in the game, that to me was, was, why? <laughs> a Nintendo game, and Sonic is in it, and you get to play as Mario 2, so you get to have these two little dudes just go booking it at each other, bro. It's wild. But, I guess, um, over the past few years, and again, it sort of, if it wasn't for the movies, I feel like it would have been a much dire situation, but recently, my love relationship with Sonic has turned into a like relationship. Like, as the video says, I miss loving Sonic. Because, I say that because Sonic, I feel like, is just not Sonic anymore. Like, this Sonic, right here, as I'm totally pointing at him. <laughs> this Sonic right here feels like a different Sonic. And this Sonic right here also feels like a different Sonic. The problem is that when I'm talking about Mario, when I'm talking about this cute little plumber, I'm talking about Mario. Just, just Mario. And only Mario. But when I'm talking about Sonic, there's like whole different types of Sonics. There's classic Sonic, which is the one on my shirt. There's modern Sonic, which is this guy, who's taking over most of the quote-unquote bad or just straight-up terrible games. Then there's Sonic Boom, you know, there's Sonic in some TV show, and there's Archie Sonic, who is Sonic but God. Then there is, apparently now, Movie Sonic. There's five different Sonics. Which Sonic should I be liking? When I say I like Sonic the Hedgehog, I feel like I have to say, well, I like classic Sonic, or I like the Sonic before Sonic 06. Sonic the Hedgehog just simply isn't Sonic the Hedgehog, and it really sucks, because... How do I explain this? So, when the second Sonic movie came out, obviously we had to watch that. We were just so hyped up about it. We kind of... I was... We were a little... Well, mostly me. I was a little eh on the first Sonic movie. I thought it was good, but definitely something I wasn't willing to watch again. But when we saw the second Sonic movie, I was thrilled, I was excited, I was pumped. There was something about it that was just so different. There was something about it that was just so much more better than the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie. And thanks to all the things that, you know, kind of re reawoken my interest in Sonic the Hedgehog, I decided, what should I do with this 
newfound feeling of liking Sonic like the Hedgehog. What should I do with it? What, what, what do I do? What do I do with my pastime? So, we went to my cousin's house because I think it was for an Easter party, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So I decided, well, I've noticed that Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Hedgehog 2 are on the Nintendo eShop for the Nintendo Switch. So, why don't I just book my way to those games, go buy that, see how I like it. So I decided to play those games as we were at our cousin's house. Um, I was actually able to finally beat the one zone in Sonic the Hedgehog that I was never ever able to beat for some reason. Spring Yard Zone, that's what it was, it was Spring Yard Zone. And then after that, I finally went to the Labyrinth Zone, which then blew my mind like, whoa, I didn't know that the Heritage Stage was gonna be the next one after Spring Yard Zone. Gosh dang, bro. After a few attempts, I definitely beat the Labyrinth Zone. It took a few tries, but you know, I was actually able to beat it. So then I was like, well, what zone is next? Well, what kind of zone awaits me after what was one of the hardest zones in the whole game? And then, the next zone loaded in. Starlight Zone was such an was such a reawakening zone. Like, part of it is because of um, I've actually never heard of that zone ever. I've never heard about it, I've never seen it, I've never even heard days about it. But yet, yeah, it's so weird knowing that people have been there. It, something about it felt weird knowing that in 1991, or 1992, I can't remember what, 1991, that's what it was. 1991, people played the Sega Genesis, and they hop on, and they're actually in the Starlight Zone. And it's until 30 years later, that I just now learned about this, that I just now got to it. And this is coming from someone who has played Sonic games, who has played- who was one of the first games I've ever played was Sonic the Hedgehog 1. And it's only until a month ago, after the second Sonic movie, that I first learned about Starlight Zone. I already knew about Scrap Brain Zone, I mean, sort of, I mostly heard just only a little things about it, but I already kind of knew about its existence, but I never ever heard about Starlight Zone ever. And to I guess also be fair, pretty much all the other zones that were also in Sonic the Hedgehog 2 that came after, um, I forgot what that stage is called, but that stage sucked. I hated it. So then I was thinking, well, what happened to my interest in Sonic other than the fact that the games have been bad? Why is it that, what happened exactly? Where did this sudden change of kind of having a weird relationship with this character that I can no longer tell if I actually like Sonic the Hedgehog or not. I think the problem with this little guy is that, simply put it, I guess you could say the competition was just too fast for Sonic. This is, this is the cue where you guys start laughing. <laughs> okay, but seriously, in all seriousness, it was kind of an unintentional pun, but the competition kind of was too fast for Sonic. And when I say competition, I mean Mario, and things that were on the Xbox like Halo, and then things that were on the play- well, sort of Crash Bandicoot, I guess, I don't know about Crash Bandicoot, since he was kind of dying out after Crash Bandicoot 3. But I think, simply put it, a lot of things have been coming out that just simply outweighed Sonic the Hedgehog as a whole. And again, definitely not even talking about the fact that Mario 100% was outweighing Sonic the Hedgehog, at least after Sonic 06. But even during those times, there was just something about Sonic the Hedgehog that was like, even after Sonic 06, there was something about, like, you know, Sonic Colors, Shadow the Hedgehog, um, what is it, Team Sonic, Sonic and Sega also racing, why, why does it have to be three Sonic racing games, why? Why? But it's like, even those games that came out after the, I guess, Dark Ages, or whatever you want to call it, even Sonic and the Black Knight, there was something about Sonic that still held up with me and my cousin. There was still something about him that still kept our interest. There was still something about him that there was a reason to like him over Mario, and I think simply put it, I think Sonic nowadays has just lost his charm, if that makes any sense. I mean, again, part of it is because of the bad Sonic games that came out. Sonic Boom, Sonic Forces, <laughs> Sonic 06, and 
Depending on who you are, Shadow the Hedgehog. Does anyone even remember that Team Sonic Racing is a thing? Does anyone remember that? I forgot I have that game. Maybe I should have got Crash Bandicoot Team Racing, or whatever that game is called. But I think simply put it, Sonic the Hedgehog has just lost his charm. But how exactly has he lost his charm? How did something as cool as him, as Mr. Sonic the Hedgehog, who won so fast, who, 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 whose whole purpose was to do everything Nintendo didn't do, how did he get outran by his competition? It was Big the Cat. I'm not joking. Okay, let's make this more clear. It's not just Big the Cat. It's a lot of characters that were introduced into the Sonic universe. I... <laughs> I... There was this poster that we... That me and my friends found at my early birthday that of, like, this giant poster of, like, all the Sonic characters and such. And I was sitting there like, man, that's a cool Sonic poster. And I only know not even half of the Sonic characters up there. Simply put it, there are just too many Sonic characters. Way too many Sonic characters. Now, depending on who you are, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But like, let me be real with you. There are a handful, and I mean a handful of Mario characters, right? But how many of them do you even remember? Better yet, how many of them try to hog the spotlight from Mario? Other than Luigi, I can guarantee you, none. Mario, Luigi, the freaking dumb toads, Princess Peach, Princess Daisy, Warrior, Waluigi, they are such a huge staple of the Mario series. And then you have all those other side characters which only show up in the side games, right? And then you have Sonic the Hedgehog, which he has a little bit more characters than side characters, you know? Now, obviously there's Tails, which he was introduced at probably the right time, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And there was Knuckles, who was introduced in Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Okay, makes sense. You're introducing more and more anthropomorphic supernatural animals. You know, that makes sense. And then they introduce, you know, Shadow the Hedgehog in Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. You're introducing a character into the 3D series, and he is a cool, pretty poggers character. But I skipped over a lot of characters. <laughs> More, partic more particularly, I skipped over Nuggles and Chaotix, and do you remember this game called Sonic and the Fighters? Or Sonic Fighters, I can't remember what, what it was exactly what it was called. But there were a lot of strange and wacky characters that were introduced in those games, and I remember none of them. I think the problem is that, since because Sonic's reputation has just gone down, they're a little too reliant on the characters that were also introduced back then, and they're kind of trying to pull them in to get some sort of thing out of it. And this was a thing that I talked about with uh, me and my friend Mari um, about the recent downfall of Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, one of the things that sucked about Sonic Forces was it tried to be like a, uh, a unison, if that's the right word. Like a unison of like all the Sonic fans, like whoever loved classic games or modern games and all that type of stuff to play this one game that sucked. There was also the addition of, you know, custom characters, and when I say the un unison of all those fans, it's because they introduced way too many characters. Like, Silver the Hedgehog. I actually forgot about him. Team Chaotix, which I can't remember they introduced them back. Rouge the Bat, which I s s almost forgot she existed. Amy Rose, why is she still in the series? And then, I'm probably missing like a lot of characters, bro. There's, pro there's probably way more that I'm forgetting. But the only ones I can remember that are actually in it is Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Shadow. Something about those four are just like the main staple of the Sonic series. But thanks to all those other characters that were introduced, even some before Shadow, there's just too many Sonic characters. And again, I think it's... The reason why I'm mentioning this is because of my other strong point of why I feel like Sonic has been having a recent downfall. Sega, more specifically Sonic Team, has lost focus of what Sonic is. Now, again, I'm trying to ignore the fact that the games are bad or, you know, Sonic Colors Ultimate in particular has gone a complete flop of a game. When I say that Sonic Team or everyone that's behind Sonic in general has lost focus, I mean as in, I feel like they've lost a sense of direction of where they're supposed to take Sonic. 
And one of the things I keep hearing a lot is that because of all the games that Sega has released that are considered flops, the biggest reason why we've gotten a lot more considerable failures of Sonic the Hedgehog is because Sega not only is running out a lot of money because of the failures, but is also really afraid to fail. One of the basic foundations of human life is to understand failure to be successful. And Sonic the Hedgehog, or at least the series in particular, I don't know why I keep picking him up, like as if I have to show him as some sort of example, <laughs> but Sonic the Hedgehog has lost its focus because it's too afraid to fail. Because it has failed before but they didn't know what to do after those failures. Especially since, again, which, to be fair, failing is a little scary, especially when it involves a lot of money, but if you don't fail, you'll never be something much greater than yourself. And unfortunately, Sega, or Sonic Team in particular, just doesn't see that that well. It's a little bit hard to explain how they kind of lost focus, but one of the things that I've seen a lot about the Sonic's team in general is that there's been a lot of, um, at least to my knowledge, back in the days, there's actually been a lot of more mismanagement than we came to even realize. There's been a lot of videos that I've been watching where they kind of sort of explain why Sonic has like kind of ran off its path into a different direction that doesn't seem to be going forward anymore. And this is kind of the, so the it's kind of the reason why I feel that Sonic has lost his focus. It's because of the failures, it's because of the too many Sonic characters, and it's because of the lack of focus, or the lack of direction, or as you can say, one heck of a terrible work environment that used to have been during the Sonic Hero days. Sega, I strongly feel just doesn't know what they need to do with Sonic. Now, admittedly, this is assuming the worst for Sonic Frontiers, and I really, really hope Sonic Frontiers is going to be a good game. But until then, one of the things that sucks is that all Sonic really just does is just keep reminding me of the past. And I was really thinking about that a lot, is that Mario, every time I think about Mario, I think about the incredible things that this guy has brought to my life. And not just that, but the incredible games that have came out recently. Even, so, even some of the more what you would say mediocre ones like, you know, the Super Mario Golf game or whatever. Those are still great games. You can play them, no one's stopping you from playing them. But Sonic, on the other hand, I genuinely don't know what came after Sonic Forces other than the movies. Now, admittedly, Sonic is getting a good leavage, if that's the right word, in the other different types of medias like movies, and now apparently he's getting a Netflix TV show, which I can at least hope, I can really hope, that they'll go that goes well for Sonic, but my issue is, even if that goes well for Sonic, there's still a whole nother medium that is still missing the right Sonic. That is the same medium that Sonic originated from, and that is video games. Sonic's purpose back in the day was to be everything Nintendo wasn't doing, was to be everything Mario wasn't. Cooler, faster, and just everything just Trendy, I guess, related. I mean, he came out in the 90s, so it was a little bit orientated to what was going on in that in those days. So he was to literally be everything that Mario couldn't be. Nowadays, I don't know what Sonic can do that Mario hasn't done to an even better extent. Well, I guess to wrap up everything that I've been talking about, to just end it all off, I miss loving Sonic. I really, really miss loving Sonic. I miss back in the day when the only games I was playing was Sonic Heroes, Sonic Adventure 2, even though I never got to finish that game. Freaking Sonic Colors. And then when I was heading over with my cousin, we were playing Shadow the Hedgehog, or Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing. We were just doing so many things Sonic related. I just, I really miss doing things that were Sonic related. I really miss that feeling of playing Sonic the Hedgehog with a reason. I really miss loving Sonic the Hedgehog. I really miss Mario having a sort of competition in the video game world. And I really miss what Sonic stood for. He stood for a certain kind of different thing. Sonic wasn't Crash Bandicoot. Sonic wasn't Halo. Sonic wasn't Mario. Sonic was Sonic the Hedgehog at the end of the day. 
but nowadays, it seems like Sonic the Hedgehog himself doesn't even know what he wants to be. And now since because of that, we're kind of at this weird thing where Sonic the Hedgehog is mostly just for the hierarchy who who gifts, goofs, and whiffs, and hiffs, and whiffs of social media. But I really miss when Sonic was the man. Now, like I said, Mario for me is number one. Mario is the guy. He will always be the guy. But I wish... I wish Mar- I wish the time when Mario had someone next to him to compete with him. Sonic the Hedgehog. I guess to end off this video, I want to show you guys a little bit of a montage of just what Sonic was for me. What my Sonic was. What the Sonic was that everyone was missing. And what I hope that Sega does is that they stop doing things that are related to reminding us about Sonic from the past. That they finally learn to move forward. And they finally learn to make good games for once. <laughs> but most importantly, they finally figure out what Sonic is supposed to be. Sonic, as much as I feel weird saying this, as much as I don't like saying this, Sonic is meant to be what Mario isn't. A cool, a fast, speedy hedgehog. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys whatever you do next. Take care. God bless you guys. Sonic, I wish you luck in Sonic Frontiers.